This is Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. So, you're struggling to read your Bible and pray, are you? This is Wretched Radio. Sowing and reaping will help you to read your Bible longer and to pray more focusedly. Like, do you struggle in those areas? God has a principle. It is not a law per se, but there is a principle in the Bible that is found in Galatians chapter 6. You sow to the flesh, you'll reap corruption. Sow to the spirit, you'll reap eternal life. It, it doesn't get you saved. It's a demonstration that you are saved. And God promises blessings when you sow to the Spirit, if you scoot over to 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, you'll see that theme woven throughout the giving chapters. That's what 2 Corinthians 8 and 9 are. This is the section where Paul is encouraging the Corinthians to give generously so that the saints in Jerusalem who are suffering, who have nothing but beatings and persecution, will have something. Paul talks about the blessings that come with giving. It's the same, it's sowing and reaping applied. When you give your gifts to church, you're going to reap a spiritual harvest. When you give your funds to something godly, overall, something is going to be a blessing in your life. Is this karma? No. That's an unguided process with no rule book. Sowing and reaping is God running everything and basically setting up these rails, if you will, that if you run on this track, overall, this is what's going to happen to you. He might alter it and change it at his desire because he can, and he's not sinning if he does, because there's something else that he needs to work out in your life or to do for you. So sowing and reaping basically looks like this. You study hard, you get good grades. Typically. Are there ever times when you study hard and you bomb the exam? I, I, I wouldn't know because I only did the latter part. I never did the former part. But the point is, typically, this is how things work. You obey the speed limit. You don't get tickets. You obey your parents. You have a more happy home. You work hard at the office. You tend to get a raise or noticed. You tend to. Does it happen always? No, it doesn't. But in general, you sow good stuff and good things happen. Does this mean word of faith? No, that's, that's completely unbiblical where you speak it, you believe it, and then God does it because our words have power and our actions even have power. And if you do this, then God is forced to do that. No, nope, that's not the way that it works. But God typically gives blessings. Are they ever physical? Yeah. You work hard, you get the raise. Look at that. That's a blessing from God because you've been sowing rightly. And you can take a look at what you're doing every single day and determine, am I sowing to the flesh? Am I sowing to the spirit? And chances are pretty good you might be able to connect the blessings because they aren't always physical. You exercise, you eat right. Typically, you have fewer health problems. But not always. Healthy people, you know, they get sick too and die. What does God, however, in my opinion, always provide as a blessing for obedience? It's spiritual. And here's where it can get a little bit tricky. You don't sense it. You don't see it. But I'm suggesting to you, start looking and you'll be able to get it and make the connection. If you have been spending your day trying to be obedient to the Lord because you love him that much, take note at what he's doing to you, inside of you, how he's growing you, changing you. He didn't give you a raise. You didn't get a new car. You didn't even get an A+. Plus. But maybe, just maybe, you have more love for him, for others. Not as crabby as I used to be. I've got joy. I'm not as short-tempered as I once was. I'm growing in patience. Notice the list. He'll grow you in fruit of the Spirit. There's a spiritual blessing that comes with sowing to the Spirit. Now, 
motivation suddenly comes into play, doesn't it? So you're telling me, if I basically do good stuff, I'm going to get good stuff back. Well, basically, yeah, I am saying that. But if that's your motivation for doing these things, uh, you might want to just tweak it a wee little bit. It's not to suggest that God does not offer rewards and blessings as an incentive to us because he does. It, it's similar to the, the payroll system. God graciously doesn't have to, but he offers blessings for obedience. The psalmist talked about blessings, how good it is to be obedient to God, how good it is to apply his law to my heart, that his word, it's dwelling in me and it's producing things inside of me and it's so good to be like this. He's sowing to the spirit and you can, you can bank on this. That God's going to grow you spiritually and give you spiritual blessings. And they're going to start being be, becoming produced more and more the more you sow to the Spirit. It's his program. It's the way that it works. Let me ask you about your Bible reading. Do you struggle? Do you sometimes fall asleep? Do you sometimes just don't even want to read it at all? Do you find day or days go by and you haven't touched God's letters to you? What should you do? Here's where the principle of sowing and reaping comes into play. Read it. Just read it. And you're going to want to read it some more. <laughs> That's the way that it works. Well, wait, I don't want to read it. That's the problem. So... God needs to mystically bobbity boo me and make me want to read the Bible more and actually do it. Not the way that it works. Be obedient. Read your Bible like you ought. And you're going to want to read your Bible more. Oh, is that how it works? That's how it works. You struggle to pray. Pray. And you're going to want to pray more. Because you're sowing to the Spirit. Are you struggling against a sin? Stop doing it. And increasingly, you're not going to want to do it. And you're going to have more power to conquer it. That's the way that it works. Is there a word that might be coming to your mind right now? The word sanctification? That's what this is. The more you do this, the more you get that. The more you do the other thing, the more you're going to be blessed in that way. That's sanctification. The more good you do, the more obedient you are, the more good you're going to do, and the more obedient you're going to be. What about your ability to praise God? Struggling? Praise God. And you're going to want to praise God more. Why? Because that's the way that it works. It is a synergistic working with the Holy Spirit to grow in holiness. That's what sanctification is. All the while, even as we are striving to be obedient, we recognize that it is all by the power of the Holy Spirit. You can't do anything without his power. But nevertheless, you are called to mortify sin, to do good, to love, to serve, to do the one another. So you're actually doing them, even though you're empowered by the Holy Spirit, but you got to do them. You don't serve at church much. Start serving at church, and you're going to want to serve at church more. Why? Because that's the way that it works. And God, in the meantime, is going to start producing fruit in your life of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Why? Because you are synergistically working with the Holy Spirit who provides blessings and fruit in your life. Should your motivation be to simply get more fruit? <sighs> no. Can it be a motivation? Yes. What is the ideal motivation that should be the tinder that lights the fire of obedience? A desire to simply respond rightly to the one who did everything for me. Jesus read his Bible as he ought. Jesus prayed as he ought. Jesus didn't look with lust as he ought not. He fulfilled all righteousness was beaten, bruised, hung in the air, gasping 
for air so that you could be forgiven and seen as the righteousness of God in Christ. And that is the knowledge that should cause me to go, you know what? He did that for me. I'm not going to click that button. He did that for me. I'm going to pull back on my temper. He did that for me. I am not going to treat people that way. He did that for me. (laughs) I want to learn more about him and read his word more. He did that for me. I should talk to him about his goodness more regularly. He did that for me. I need to be serving more at the precious institution that he is building called the church. Have you been struggling? Stop sowing to the flesh. Start sowing to the spirit. And you will struggle less and become more like Jesus Christ. This is Wretched Radio. Good evening, my fellow totally depraved Americans. 